Yeah, this is the second half of my video that I am um, taking at night because um, the sun usually has an impact on the other side of the window. So um, trying to show something in the at night or in the evening and being able to not have this reflection of the sun. Hopefully we can have a good look at some of these plants that I'm taking pictures of. This little beauty. Um, I used to remember the name, but I have just forgotten. But it's a pretty little thing. And it's a sh shape like a, a heart, silver heart. Yes, that's right. It's Brunera. That's the name just comes in um, a little bit later, really. So it's a Brunera plant that loves to grow under the woodland areas. Very popular in the English gardens. Not so much here in Australia because generally it's either too hot or far too cold for them. But here in Victoria, where I live, it does seems to do okay. And here's my um, uh, one of those plants that um, they either call it elk horn or steak horn. To me it's an elk horn because steak horn has a better big leaves where the brown leaves are. So that seems to be coming away beautifully. And my fans here are doing okay. And um, this is one of the enthuriums family. Not really quite sure which one, but that's the leaves are just beautiful there. From there, we're swinging on to over here um, onto this particular plant, which flowers 365 days a year, the begonia, which is a um, really pretty one there. Coming from there, is um, Silver Falls here that seems to dry out and then it throws out new shoots there so it just sort of <laughs> looks after itself really and um, and it's um, quite a long one that's crawling all over there and I've got a lot more elk horns lined up there another one here that is about to a company that wall over there I want all the elk horns to be put up over there we were supposed to do it today but we don't have a concrete driller which we we did actually and my husband lost it somewhere in the house so we need to buy another one tomorrow so hopefully once it's up I will get the pictures to show you how it's looking over there from there, then we come back again, um, golden potha there, philodendron, that's doing quite well there, and one of um, this particular uh, mistletoe cactus, um, lepispium, lepispium, sorry, cruciform, as you can see the name there. And that one hasn't flowered, but it's really quite long. Keeps going and going and going. So that's, um, I actually don't mind long dangly plants because they really make the place really beautiful. And this particular one also I quite like. Um, I think it's called Diasoc Cactus. Uh, which is um, 
they call it rat's tail, but I don't know whether it's a rat's tail or monkey's tail. It's one of those tails. You know, you could even say mouse tail because it's not really that thick. And this one is another Sarcostema vencilli, which is also quite a long one and um, goes right up to the bottom over there. And then we've got another um, chain of hearts there. I've actually got quite a few variegated ficus. I think there's about five of them in this um, particular atrium. And the other one is actually um, hiding amongst over there. Loving the conditions. There's nothing wrong with them. And the rubber plant, the burgundy farcus over there which is um, throwing out some beautiful new leaves in there which is looking rather nice um, coming from there here are all my babies that I did um, videos on they seems to be coming away beautifully there's some more new uh, cuttings that I've received via mail and some bits and pieces coming away there and this is another box of stuff that came in exchanges so I have to find places to plant them at some point. From there here's some more of cacti loving plants. One of those um, long things, um, so called condom plant. Uh, when it's in flower it's um, just starting to roll and climb all over on those um, steel pipes in there. So I assume this will let carry on doing its thing and give me lots of flowers. This particular one is one of those zigzag cactuses that I picked up from the market the other day. I quite like it and it wasn't too pricey so um, I got tempted to buy that particular one and here's another one of the Vipsalis family with lots of beads happenings and things just loves little beads and stuff there and you can plant them they make a really good show um, more on the show here lots of plants to look at really and this one here one of those um can't remember the name now for button they're just beautiful out in the tropics and then i've got some more palms in there and this particular Lipsalis, it's quite nice looking there. I'll just get the name of that one. It's Pilocarpa, really, this particular one. It's looking quite nice. And then here's another plant, um, a variegated plant which is trailing quite nicely. I really don't know the name of this particular part plant but looking rather beautiful and um, Swiss cheese plant um, again it's um, been through winter and it's really struggling you know in winter they sort of go brown edges but now that it's getting warmer it should throw some beautiful new leaves i'm hoping um another of the ripsalis in here that's looking quite good sorry about shaking it's just my hand is getting a little bit sore from uh, having it higher up here's another one of the um, twisted lepispium and it's doing quite well there 
That one has lost lots of leaves this year. I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe it was just too cold. This sort of thing does happen to a lot of my plants when, you know, they go through minus one degrees in winter. But, you know, they'll come away when the weather warms up. Today it's freezing. I believe it was snowing up on the mountains here. And it's supposed to be coming into summer shortly. It doesn't feel like it's a summer's day. More like uh, midwinter, really. So we are facing some uh, weather challenges these days because we just never know when we're going to get spring or summer. Um, the temperatures are just so varied these days. Here's another one of the Vipsalis that is doing quite well and this hasn't really done much um, throughout hang on throughout winter because obviously hang on I'm just trying to get this plant forward see in winter it suffers a little bit with uh, black blotches and thing this is the fluoro lemon potho and um, I have to have a good look into it, see what's what I can do. Um, obviously, it really needs warmth. And this one here is, let's see. Oh, it's a quite a lengthy name. Oh my God, it, I, I don't think I could even read it. Mes Mesembryanthomide. Mesembrythemoides. Oh my god. Um, I, I don't know what to call this in simple terms, but if it was me, I would call a rice cactus because it's size of rice. Anyway, some of the names are actually mouthful, and obviously, in you know, I suppose it's another language. Latin or something, so it's very hard to pronounce Latin words and big letters and words. However, these are some of the ferns that um, I have got a couple of big ferns which um, are actually I can shift it around anywhere here in the atrium, which is the bonus really to have um, these particular ferns. And they're just about sprouted with new leaves and things looking good there and this is my emergency bench if any of my plant dies this is what I use to replace in my atrium with there's just all sorts here um, some of these uh, Japanese um, holly fern which you can see there and right at the back there and Monstera deliciosa there um, the iron plant there cast iron um, this particular one here don't we've forgotten the name of that one and this one here is also one of those plants that I seem to forget the name so quickly. I mean, they're simple names, but Japanese, uh, Japanese Aralia. And it's obviously got another name for it. Oh, Fetsia Japonica, actually. Those ones. And uh, more ferns. More of these. More ferns here and more ferns more ferns yeah so this is just um somewhere that i can quickly take plants out and replace them if my atrium had had an emergency whether it be a disease got to it or something else got to it easy replacement and some of those, remember I did a lot of maidenhair ferns. Um, they, 
but the maiden hair fans and lace fans. Lace fans are actually taking forever to come up, but I have seen little bits coming out of them during the day. I saw them. So hopefully another few uh, weeks I will see some green bits actually sticking up, really. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, plants that, you know, um, needs a lot of attention sometimes winter has been tough on them and we just hope that in spring they all sprung up and <laughs> starts to flower and and show some growth thanks for watching my video this is the nightlife in my atrium well this that's the big side of the nightlife that i took in part one of my video so it is quite a huge area to look after. Hope you enjoyed my video and thanks for watching. Have a very good night. Bye for now.